truth concerning the Bible and God's chosen people. And with that, there's a lot more I can go into and maybe I'll make it another lesson. And in this academy, we will be going over the 12 tribes in detail this next coming academy, so which is in two weeks. All right. So, brothers and sisters, if you want to be a part of that, make sure you send an email to gathering as one. That's the number one at AOL.com. In a few weeks, we have a brand new one coming with new lessons, and we're going to break these things down. But I'm going to put this one up and make sure Santi put this lesson up that we did today online. You're going to have that in a few days on our YouTube channel, uh, a gathering 144. All right. With that, I'm going to say shalom and we can open this up for questions. You got some time, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Someone says, "What well, was Ant was Heli Selassie an antichrist?" Well. Heli Selassie never held himself as anything. It wasn't until he was he was authorized through the Queen of England, which which is she's a top sorcerer, a mason, to go over and try to unify people under a new doctrine. Because we had our people in Jamaica who was breaking free from the slave doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church that was predominantly in Jamaica and the West Indies. See, Jamaica is under England's authority. So they allowed a, one of their high masons, Heli Selassie, which was an Ethiopian. He was not an Israelite. He was not from the tribe of David. They, these were made stories so that they can actually usher in the spirit of Antichrist and have people believe in that doctrine opposed to the true doctrine according, uh, to, according to Christ and move you out of Israel and the thinking of Israel and to think more so Ethiopia. So it's still leading us to believe that we're some Hamitic people out Ham and not Shem. So that's the overall deception that, that comes with Heli Selassie. Heli Selassie while he was living he was just trying to get some black people to come over there and help him build some stuff for free. That's what he was trying to do. It wasn't until after he was gone that they made him into some antichrist God with the new Rasta doctrine. That's something our people created. We, we always, we do this thing, this all the time amongst ourselves because we don't, that, that, that's just a mechanism that kicks in uh, uh, with the lost people who are looking for truth. That's just a lost people looking for truth. So we just needed something outside of our program. And that's, that Heli Selassie teaching was an option. That was an option for that. So with that, let me open this up for questions. I hope uh, the understanding came out for you today. And uh, and uh, I'll open this up for questions here. We can't put up last week's because obviously they erased that. Did Nick, did Nick Tesla do good in the earth? If you call creating the death ray that they will soon use on your people, and also that technology that he put in the earth that Satan gave him that they will use for anti-matter weapons. If you want to call that good, then okay, but he would go down as one of the top sorcerers to have lived in this earth. Go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 14. Someone asks, can we explain? 1 Corinthians 14 and 14. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 14. Yeah, read that. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. If you pray in an unknown un unknown tongue read my spirit prayer my spirit prayer that's you praying read but my understanding is unfruitful your understanding is unfruitful because why you're not edifying to no one else so what how can what you're doing be 
be, be edifying or fruitful. That means bring people to the most high when no one know what you're saying. Only when you bring the truth to people and edify to them. Only when that happens would you bring forth fruit. Read the 25th verse. Verse 25. And thus are the secrets of the heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship the Most High and report that the Most High is in, is in you of a truth. I'm going to start from verse uh, uh, 23. Read. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place. If the church come together in one place, that's a church coming together. And all speak with tongues. If all speak in another language. And there come in those that are unlearned. And somebody come in that, that, that really don't know the truth. Read. Or unbelievers. Or unbelievers may come. That means people who are coming to get some sort of answers. Read. Will they not say that you are mad? They will look at you when they walk into your church and say, these people are crazy. I came to get some understanding on the Bible and they're speaking into some stuff I don't understand. Read. Verse 24. But if all prophesy, but if all prophesy, there come in one that believeth not, and one that come in the church don't believe, read, or one unlearned, or a person who's still learning, read, he is convinced of all. He will be convinced to come to the truth. Why? He see you prophesying, and then he, he go out and see these prophecies coming to pass, then he becomes a believer. Someone who's unlearned is hearing a teacher edify in the church and see the work of the Most High, he becomes a believer. But how can one become a believer when someone is in there shouting and saying things that no one understands? What are they believing in? Read. He is judged of all. Verse 25. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship the Most High and report that the Most High is in you of a truth. See, but when you edify, then that person will be pricked in his spirit and fall down and praise the Most High for revealing the truth to them. See that? But he can't thank the Most High for truth if he's going into a place and people are speaking in unknown tongues. See? Go to Isaiah 45 and 14. They ask us to, to, to uh, read and break that one down too. Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 14, thus saith the Most High, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, they shall be thine, they shall come after thee in chains, shall they co come over, and they shall fall down unto thee, they shall make supplication unto thee, saying, surely the Most High is in thee, and there is none else, there is no God. So you, you want us to explain that? That means the nations are going to make supplications to the children of Israel and know that their gods were false. That's future prophecy. Okay. What's next? And, and if they, according to Negro features, were, does that place so-called African skin color, hair, texture, facial features, etc. Well, we know that the majority of Africa outside of northern Africa are the children of Israel, beyond any shadow of a doubt. Because all of Ham's children inhabited North Africa up, up until the land of Canaan. The rest of Africa was really not inhabited until after Rome took us down and the majority of us ran into Eastern Africa, West Africa, South Africa. You understand? So the majority of the people in Israel today, I mean in Africa today, the majority of them are the lost tribes of Israel, predominantly Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All right, what do we have next here? Someone asked, will there be great tribulation? Well, there's going to be tribulation all the way up until the time Christ return. All right. It's get, it, tribulation is getting worse and worse as it goes. So the closer we get to Israel being born, talk about our people being born as a nation again, like a woman in contractions, the closer we get, the more pain we're going to suffer on this earth. And this is not talking about the church. This is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel will suffer pain until we are born again as a nation. 
All right. I don't know whether or not Shaka Zulu was a Hamite. I, I don't. I haven't done the research on Shaka Zulu. All right. Is Bigfoot a Nephilim? I've never done any research on Bigfoot. All right. I, I cannot say definitively whether or not he's that's some product of some type of genetic research or whatever they're doing. They probably missed mixing beasts with people as far as I know. I don't. The Bible says, as the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So they're probably doing some splicing and making all types of ardent creatures. That would be an opinion that I have, but until I get some concrete proof, I can't say for sure what they claim Bigfoot is. All right. Someone you had some people claim that Bigfoot was was a uh, 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 behemoth, but that's not true. Behemoth is a whole nother type of beast in the earth. Mm -hmm. Uh let me pause this for a second here so I can get all these questions. The South Sudanese are from the children of Israel. The 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 Florida Indians, the Floridian Indians, not all, not the North American Indians. The, the the Indians of Florida are Reuben. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Since the Irish were slaved first and the longest, could it be possible that they are Dan and Judah? Well, keep in mind that the Irish you're speaking of are the blacks who were in England and um, in, in the UK in those areas during the Dark Ages. So those Irish are not talking about white or Caucasian Irishmen. They're speaking of the blacks who were royalty during the Dark Ages. That's those Irish people that went into slavery. There wasn't no white Irish people who were enslaved. Those were black. Irishmen. Don't forget, uh, King James sat on three thrones at once. A black man by the name of King James. Spain, Ireland, and Great Britain. I mean, let's get it. Ireland, France, and Great mm -hmm. Britain. Yeah. Ireland, France, and Great Britain. Excuse me. Let's see here. Someone asks, how do we break down or destroy the theology of the church teaching that the Jewish people will repent when Christ returns? My question is, what scripture is that? What scripture is the Jewish people will repent? Repent from what? They have no, they have no spirit in them at all as a nation to follow Christ. They're atheists. It, matter of fact, it was atheists of their people that set up the ideology, that actually got the ball rolling so that they can get Israel. They're fulfilling the scriptures of the Gentiles destroying and taking the land. So no, my question is, if there's some scripture that says that these people are going to repent when Christ comes back, what scripture is that? And if they can't show you a scripture, ask them, why are you saying something? Why are you trying to convince me of something you've never read in the Bible? Where did you get that from? That the people in Israel is going to repent when Christ returns. When they're the ones that's warned against Christ. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 